Hello and welcome to your first tutorial in C++ and I'm really excited that you're joining, here, joining uh, with me here today. Uh, my name is Adam Huntley and I'll pretty much be your guide for this uh, video series. So, uh, oh my goodness, I'm a little, just a little bit nervous here. Um, C++ is a bit of a, uh, arguably the toughest language to learn. It's, uh, it's pretty complicated, uh, so I do advise you to watch my level 1 playlist in C Sharp. If you're watching this pretty early, like as soon as I upload this, Actually, within a year of I upload this, my level one is all I have for C sharp. But um, the reason why I say that is because it's much more easy to visualize what I'm doing. The core programming concepts are all the same in there, so you don't have to worry about that. And the syntax, or in other words, the look of the language is very similar. So I do advise you to look at that. If not, that's fine. If you want to go right into C plus plus, more power to you because uh, I'm I'm not gonna act like you already know what things are and stuff because that would just be very rude too, wouldn't it? Uh, you know, when people, they talk in their tutorials, they act as if, you know, you already know everything. Oh, that's terrible. Oh my gosh, I couldn't learn that way. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. Uh, and also, this will be the only tutorial that I do full screen for two reasons. The first reason is because it's lesser quality when it's full screen. Uh, and second of all, I need to do this one full screen so you can kind of see where I go. kind of stinks too, though, because I use Camtasia, as you can see down here. And uh, I can't see how much time... Oh, that's how I can look to see how much time I'm in. Look at that, 128. Look at that, so I can actually see. Oh, that's cool. Okay, anyway, so now I can keep track of what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, we're going to be using an IDE, IDE not IDE, called uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. And you can use any IDE you want, really. Um, I have the only two I've used was GCC and Visual Studio. In the description of my video, if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you go to my C++ page on my website, at the top you'll see in the tools section a link to Microsoft's website in which you can download the Express Edition, which is free. Uh, so it'll, it should look like this. I've never used Express Edition. So let's double click this. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I, I did like so many different uh, tutorials before I started doing C++. I did like XHTML, CSS, JavaScript, Visual Basic, C Sharp, just to work up to this one. So nervous. But anyways, um, so as you can see here in the Visual Studio, you see this little getting started page. What's new in Visual Studio 2010? In all honesty, it's not much. You know, you can see latest news from, I guess, Microsoft's page, guidance on how to do stuff. I guess that's tutorials on how to do stuff. I don't know. I don't really look at that stuff. But as you can see, we can see recent projects that we had open. Um, as you can see, this, this is the example file that I use all, all the time for my Visual Basic tutorials. This is my C-Chart file excuse me, that I use in a lot of my, uh, well, C Sharp tutorials. So let's create a new one for, well, my C++. So we're going to be going to the Visual C++ section here. That's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to create an empty project. So let's call it, let's stick to continuity here. And I'll call it example underscore, I'll just call it C. Even though it's C++, but oh, well. oh okay, so let's um, create this. Wow, when they say empty project, they really mean it. Look at this, there's nothing here, that's goodness. So uh, we're going to want to actually program in C++, but there's nothing here, so what do we do? Well, what you can do is just right click on source files here, under our solution name, example underscore C as we called it, go to add, and this is another reason why it's good to do full screen now, otherwise you wouldn't see this stuff, because it'd be off screen. New item, because when I shrink it down, you only see uh, the boundaries of where I have this window right here, that's it. So we're going to be creating a new C++ file, or the extension is .cpp, which is short for uh, C++. And not to objects and classes, but will we, will we be using more files? But for now, we're just going to be calling this our main file, so main.cpp, and click Add. All right, there we go. So now we have our main CPP file there. As you can see, it's also over here, so you can look at it and access them both ways. Um, so let me kind of uh, show you around Visual Studio really quickly. So properties isn't really anything you have to deal with because, well, we're not doing like Windows Forms or console applications or anything like that. We're not going to be dealing with properties for for way down the line. Uh, this is where you can see all your files. We, we're only going to be dealing with one for a while, so don't worry about that. So errors. So let's look at this. So if we have any errors in our code, so if I just uh, type a bunch of random stuff and we get a red underline, it'll tell us what line number it's on line number one, and the description of it. What file it's in, so main.cpp, the line number again, and, oh no, this is error number, this is a line number, and the column number, which I don't understand, I don't use column numbers, but 
Oh well. And what projects it's in, which it's probably kind of redundant. I don't think you can open more more than one project at a time. If I open another project, it cl closes whatever I already have open, but oh well. Okay, so uh, line numbers are very important, and by default, I don't think you'll see them. So in order to see them, go to Tools, go to Options, go to your text editor down here. For all languages, activate line numbers. So that's all you have to do. Um, okay, so uh, that's about it for now. So let's uh, type in uh, two lines of code before we actually get into any kind of programming. And we're not going to really do any programming in this tutorial. We're going to be starting actual programming in the second tutorial. So, uh, Okay, so let's type in this, these two very important lines of code. The first one's a pound sign followed by include, no space in between, then a space, then uh, uh, some hairpins here. And then within these hairpins, you're going to type out IO stream. And I'll explain a little bit later what that means. Very soon, actually. Then after that, type out using namespace std semicolon, and that's it. So these two lines of code you'll always have in your code. Always. These these are just givens. If you don't have these, oh, we're going to be running into some trouble, and you'll see. After that, we're going to have to create the actual body in which we're going to be putting all of our code in. And don't worry, it's not that complicated. It's actually very simple. All we have to do is type out int, which is short for integer, which really does not play a part in anything, so you won't really have to worry about why we do that, but I will explain. Followed by the name of the function, our main body of code that is executed in a C++ function is always read through a main function. And that's why for our main CPP file, that's why we called it a main. So here we'll call it main, all lowercase, followed by your um, parentheses that are right next to it, Followed by an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And everything in between goes your code. Then at the very bottom, in order to tell your computer that it's done going through all your body of text, we need to return a null value. So we're going to be ret returning a null integer, which is just zero, followed by a semicolon. And I'll explain the semicolons too uh, in a moment. Okay, so what you're seeing right here is basically the main body of text. At the beginning of every tutorial, this is roughly what you'll see. Okay, so let's uh, let's say we want to print some text because I want to be able to print some text so I can show you the purpose of all of this and this and whatnot. So in order to print something on the screen on the command line that we'll be running, type out the word words or the word see out one long thing, two less than signs, uh, and then a string if you'd like. So we we'll print in double uh, quotes there and a semicolon. Then in between them, whatever you want to have printed out on, in the string. So I type out the, I will type out the programmer's default for a beginner, and that's hello world with an exclamation point, and that should print the words hello world. So I'll click the save all, which will save all tabs that you have open. We only have one tab. This doesn't count. This is just an explorer. We only have one file open, so it doesn't really matter. But I, I, I'm in a habit of using the save all. So how do we go about running this? Well, you could click the build first, but it doesn't really matter. When we get to the debugging, it'll actually build it automatically for you. So, um, if you click uh, start debugging or just F5, whoops, I'll press F5. Well, I saw a little uh, window pop up, but it disappeared really quickly. And now, why is that? Well, that's because as soon as we are done running this function right here, it shut down on us. So, how do we solve this? Well, one way is to use the whoops, uh, system pause. And this is not really recommended, um, but I'll show you the effects of it. Basically, all it does is it'll say, um, it will ask you for a keystroke. Press any key to continue, and then it'll close it for you so you can see the words hello world and whatnot. Um, but this is not really portable. This is only seen on the Windows operating system. I don't know about other operating systems, but um, obviously a lot of them don't support it, so uh, I wouldn't use it. I don't know which ones can or if any others can, so I would not use System Pause. Instead, what I would do is go to Project, go to your Properties, Configuration Properties, uh, your Linker, and then System. And I would change the subsystem to uh, Console right here, and press Apply and wait for that little uh, loading thing by my cursor to disappear 
then to press OK. Then if I hold down Control F5, what that will do is it'll run it without debugging it. Uh, and there we go. So it says hello world and it still asks for a keystroke. So that's all right. That's the way you can run it. If I still press F5, then it'll still shut down on me quickly. So, But Alt F5 will solve that problem. Okay, so uh, that's about all I want to show you with that. Debugging, basically all debugging is, is it tries to go through each line of code. Uh, and look for errors basically. If there's an error, we'll get the build errors as you saw earlier. Uh, if it builds success, if it builds successfully as it's trying to debug, then it'll run for you. And uh, one thing I like to point out with the semicolons is every line of code typically ends at the semicolon, but that's not always the case. Uh, if you're including a predefined class, there's no semicolon. Uh, if you use these uh, curly braces, almost always you never put a semicolon at the end. So bear that in mind. Uh, but but as you get into the habit of programming, it'll become very obvious when to use it and when not to use it. So don't worry. Uh, okay, so what else did I want to show you? Oh yeah, I wanted to explain these two. Okay, so in order for any of this to be legible to your computer, you need to use this predefined class called idle stream. So we need to include it. Without it, whoops, without it, if I cut this with Control X we're going to get a bunch of errors. So we're going to need that to be included for everything to be visible in order to be readable by your computer. Now using namespace std, we don't need this namespace, but it be may become problematic. So if I cut this, uh, C out makes no sense. It's undefined because, well, it doesn't exist in idle stream or it doesn't exist anywhere else. So how do we access it? We can just type out std manually, then a couple colons, and I'll get rid of it. But typing that out everywhere in all your code, that's just ugly, isn't it? I don't want that. Eh. So I'm just going to paste std back up there, so that won't be a problem. So I click save all, and that's about it for that. So when we were running this program, uh, notice how pressing a key to continue is right next to the hello world. I don't really like that. So what we could do is put that on the next line. So there's two different ways you can do about that. Go, go about that. That's to use an escape key. So backslash n, so this right here tells the string to go on to the next line. Then if I run this, it goes down to the next line. But a, um, a better way, and a way I prefer that you do this, is to use the n line command. So a couple of those hairpin things again. Then we'll use n line. So e n d l. That's it. And then if we uh, run this. So I click save. Actually, I want to just hit Alt hit 5. And there you go. So it goes on to the next line. So that's good. So that's all I really wanted to show you for programming. That's about as deep as I wanted to get. The last thing I'd like to show you is uh, how to actually find your application if you build it. So I'll build it right now. Um, build succeeded because it was already built. Oh, my voice cracked. Excuse me. So I'll go to Documents. And it's typically saved in your Visual Studio 2010 file. Go to Projects your solution name and then you'll see your solution file so if you double click your solution file you can open up in Visual Studio if you go to your debug right here you'll see the other app the actual application itself and you don't need these two files you just double click this and it flashes before your eyes uh, in order to keep it from that flashing you can use the system pause like I told you but uh, again that won't be readable in all operating systems so bear that in mind so again, my name's Adam Huntley, and um, yeah, I did a whole bunch of different playlists before I did this one. This is the big one that I'm a little afraid of, um, and it helps for my speaking too. Like I did XHTML, CSS, JavaScript, Visual Basic, C Sharp, and I don't know. I feel like my speaking's got a lot better because um, I do have a bit of stage fright, even though there's no one actually here listening to me doing this, but. Uh, I, I'm really glad that you're here. I, I promise that you will learn a lot. You will learn how to program C++ properly. Uh, and I'm basically going to be imitating a college course. I want to stress that. that uh, the, the, I am going to do my best. I'm going to use all my knowledge that I do gain uh, to teach you C++ properly. And uh, I'll try to make it as easy as I can. Uh, and we will build upon in each video. So... Uh, it might not always work out to start like in episode 15. I might be doing things that I taught in my, you know, episode 8 or 9 that you might not know at all. So, uh, so this is like its own college course. So it does build upon itself. 
but uh, I hope that this uh, will this whole playlist will be a uh, useful for you and well enough chit chat let's uh let's actually learn how to program in c plus plus now shall we so let's uh mosey on down to the next tutorial so i'll see you next time